My weekend started off with me talking to my family. And after that, I decided to head out and go see a temple finally. I've been in Chiang Mai long enough that I thought I should go see some temples. I've walked past a lot of the temples and I've gone into some of the smaller ones, but I really haven't filmed or taken any photos of them. If you've been checking out my Instagram, you'll see that I've taken some photos of the outside of temples, but I've never actually gone in to check out what they are like. Before we got to the temple though, I had to stop in at a cafe. I walked about a half mile, saw a nice looking cafe and decided to stop in. Since it was mid-afternoon, decided to get a nice matcha and just cool off for a bit because it was quite hot this Sunday. Finally I made it to Wumong Temple. I was really surprised with this temple. First off, the entrance isn't like I thought. Most of these temples are built in a square fashion and they have walls all around them. But this one was more like a big park. When I walked in, there was this big map, so I decided to familiarize myself with the area, just so I knew where I was going and I didn't get lost. So then, I began as I usually do, I just began wandering around the place. And surprisingly, with it being Sunday, there weren't that many people checking out this temple. Maybe this is the touristy attraction spot, but there weren't many Thais, there weren't many foreigners. It was pretty quiet, pretty relaxed. I decided to get some photos here of this cool statue, but little did I know there would be way cooler photos later on to take. Finally we get to the main reason I chose this temple. Wat Umong Temple has tunnels built into it. There's bats hanging above the ceiling. It, it just feels cool. It feels really cool inside this temple. I wouldn't even consider this a temple, but it is. As you're walking through these tunnels, what's cool is you can see these little triangles with charcoal stains on them. And you can see before electricity, this is where the monks would burn candles so that you're able to see where you're going. The, the construction of this temple is kind of wishy-washy, but it is known that it was built during two different time periods. The bottom tunnels were built about 500 to 600 years ago, whereas the top, the stupa or chedi, was built later on, probably three to 400 years ago. After checking out the temple, I decided to head to the top of it where the stupa was. And in case you don't know, I've been doing some reading, actually. And the stupa, or chedi, is the third major structure in a Buddhist temple. It's usually, it is the memorial monument to the Buddha. It symbolizes Mount Meru, the cosmic center of Buddha's universe. The central stupa, in many ways, is the most important structure in the Wat compound the temple compound. The stupa, or chedi, can sometimes have a relic built within it. You know, maybe it's like a piece of Buddha or uh, a fragment from his time. If it does have a relic within it, it's called a pratat, and it is highly revered. So yeah. Anyway, back to this. I tried my hardest to get some good shots of this because like I said, with nobody here, I could just walk all around it, take shots at any angle, and I did. I tried my best. You can see some of the results right here.
So after taking photos of the tunnels and of the stupa, or chetty, however you say it, I decided to kind of rest in the shade for a bit because it was hot and all I had to eat was, well, nothing. I only drank that green tea, which is not the best diet. So I did bring with me the Dhammapada, which is what I've been reading while I'm in Chiang Mai, just to kind of understand more of this, this religion and this culture. Um, the Dhammapada is like one of the oldest texts. Uh, some of people attribute it directly to Buddha's word. So I thought, why not, why not get this? So as I wandered the temple, I uh, earlier I had taken a picture of the map on my phone, and it kind of had a path for you to go. Kind of had a path for you to follow, so you could see everything. Well, spoiler: I didn't get to see everything because I don't think that map is current. Uh, but I did find this statue, which was off the beaten path. There was actually no path; it was a dirt trail through the bushes, which was to the right of the stupa. Nobody else was going over there. And this, as I'm looking at it right now, this is what I find interesting about the statues and stuff I'm seeing in Thailand, is everybody has like the image of the Buddha. It's either this guy with some cool braids. Big guy, big fat guy, happy. But the images that I find of Buddha and stuff here are more like this. Very grotesque, very real, very... Not at all what you'd imagine. <laughs> I just find it very interesting. Especially since this was off the beaten path. Then eventually as I was following this little map on my phone, I got to see some of the living quarters of the monks, but I didn't I didn't go too far into it. I felt like I was pushing my boundaries on where I could go. What I wanted to see was if you look at this the map I took, there were three ancient temples to the north of Wat Umo. And that's what I wanted to go see cuz these were in ruin. But I couldn't find the path. But I did find this nice little lake and a couple other nice spots where I took photos and just kind of really relaxed there. So it was worth it. One of the things I liked about this temple was that it was more like a park, a more, more of a place for a community than it was just this walled area for decorations, if you would. People could actually come in here, spend time. People could talk to the monks if they wanted to. There was a meditation center in there that taught outsiders uh, how to meditate. And it just felt nice. There were even these little signs all over that had thoughtful or wise sayings on them. It just made you think as you walked about. Overall, it was a pretty cool place. I would recommend, out of all the temples I've seen so far, check this one out. Just because there's a lot to do. Not a lot to do, but there's a lot to experience. And to me, that's what I want to do while I'm traveling. I don't want to just go see and look at decorations. I'd actually have like to have more of an experience. Going into tunnels, checking out big stupas, walking around a nice pleasant lake, reading signs, and I mean, if, if I planned ahead, I probably could have meditated at the center. That, that's just a better experience, in my, my opinion. 